Prenatal yoga? Yes. Kickboxing? Mm, no. Stationary bike? Yes. Mountain biking? Probably not a good idea. Scuba diving? Definitely, definitely not, and here's why. Welcome back to Diana in the Pink. My name is Diana, I'm a physician assistant and I specialize in women's health and gynecology. You are watching In the Pink, and if you're new here, In the Pink means in good health and spirit. So, if you like being healthy and happy, make sure you click subscribe because you are in the right place. Now before I get into this video, I want to read about what brought you here. Are you pregnant? And if so, are you currently exercising already or are you starting to think about exercising? Make sure to put that in the comment section down below. I really like to know where you are coming from. So we're going to be talking about exercise during pregnancy. So no matter if you were very sedentary before becoming pregnant or a very active like runner or weightlifter or I don't know, like pickleball or whatever, I don't know, whatever you enjoyed doing before you were pregnant, you may be wondering if what you were doing then is safe to do now. And if you didn't really exercise before you were pregnant, you might be wondering if it's okay and safe to start exercising now. And the answer is yes. Pregnant women can exercise, but there are some caveats and some do's and don'ts that are important to know. So according to the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, which I refer to a lot, it stands for ACOG, for a typical healthy pregnancy, it is safe to proceed with physical activity. There is no risk for early labor or low birth weight or miscarriage with exercising. But the important thing to recognize with this statement is that your pregnancy has to be a normal one. Now, later on in this video, I'm gonna talk about some specific exceptions on when a pregnant woman should not exercise. So make sure to stick around for that. But we're also gonna discuss what type of exercises you can do and some precautions that you can do before, during, and after your physical activity. So let's first just talk about the benefits of exercise during pregnancy. So it's really tempting to adapt a relatively sedentary lifestyle during pregnancy. I totally get it. The additional weight and then you're growing a baby and your feet are swollen and the hormonal surge makes you feel tired all the time. But exercise actually improves some of these common uncomfortable symptoms that are associated with pregnancy. So let's talk about that, starting with constipation. So that hormonal surge that you experience during pregnancy, it slows down the transit of food in your intestines. You become prone to constipation. But exercise can ease this as physical activity can improve blood circulation, which includes your gut. Also, stretching and core exercises can reduce back pain. Exercise also helps prevent you from gaining excess weight while you're carrying your baby and then to lose the baby weight faster after you deliver. By improving your physical strength and your heart and your muscles, labor might be easier. Strengthening the abdominal muscles can help you during labor while you're pushing. And then some studies have even shown that women who exercise one to two times a week even while pregnant had less depressive symptoms after your delivery. Exercise overall might decrease your risk for diabetes, high blood pressure, and then other medical issues that can complicate a delivery or lead you to have to have a cesarean section. So even if you're not an athlete or you weren't an active person before, if you want to, exercise can be very beneficial for your pregnancy. Okay, so let's talk about the recommended types of exercises that you can do during your pregnancy. So in general, 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic exercise is recommended every week. So that's around 20 minutes a day of moderate exercise or if you don't wanna do it every day, 30 to 40 minutes, four days a week. And I really wanna emphasize moderate. So how you can tell if what you're doing is moderate or too intense, moderate is where you're moving around fast enough to make your heart beat faster and make you sweat a little bit, but not so much that you can't still carry on a conversation. If you're overexerting yourself and you can't still talk, that's too much exertion. Now, if you weren't really exercising before pregnancy, that's okay. Just start slow, maybe five minutes a day of brisk walking, and then generally progress it to like 10, 15 minutes until you get to the point where you're doing the 150 minutes a week. Now is not the time to train for a marathon. That's doesn't need to be your goal. You're just trying to have a healthy, fit pregnancy for you and your baby. Now, if you were already doing quite a bit of exercise before you were pregnant, you may not need to do any type of adjustment. If you have high intensity type of workouts that you did before, like running, weightlifting, speak to your OBGYN first so that they can assess your risk. 
but generally there's not going to be a problem with what you were doing before. However, if you lose too much weight from doing this, you might have to increase your food intake or just back off on what you're doing. Now remember in pregnancy, you're not necessarily eating for two, but there is a specific amount of weight gain that's expected per trimester and you need to maintain that for your baby's health. One of the changes that's associated with pregnancy is a laxity of joints. So your ligaments around your knees and your ankles can become relaxed, which makes these joints more mobile and more prone to injury. So be aware and extra careful so you don't injure your joints or so you don't fall. Also, your center of gravity is gonna change when you're pregnant. There's more stress placed on your lower back and your pelvis. So avoid exercises that involve a lot of jumping because that can easily make you lose your balance or get injured. Because of those two specific changes in your body, the joint laxity and the changes in your center of gravity, water workouts are perfect for pregnant women. Swimming uses a lot of major muscle groups and then water will help support your weight so that you can avoid falls and injuries. Make sure you're never in a circumstance where if you get a muscle cramp, you can't safely get to the side of a pool and also never ever swim by yourself. If you liked running before pregnancy, usually it's fine to continue to run for as long as you feel comfortable. And it can vary from pregnancy to pregnancy. For me, with my first pregnancy, I couldn't run after 12 weeks. But with my last pregnancy, my fourth pregnancy, I was able to run till about 30 weeks. So it really can vary. So just be sure to listen to your body. Now, if you liked biking before you got pregnant, a safe alternative could be stationary biking. That way you're not gonna have the risk of uneven or uphill roads, dangers from passing cars. Plus the bicycle allows you to sit, so there's a lot of good support for where your center of gravity is. Yoga and Pilates can also be a good exercise for you. Yoga has a great way of helping to release stress, which is good for your mental health. And these types of exercise also focus on breathing and stretching. In fact, there are a lot of yoga and Pilates classes specific for pregnant women, which is great because it's important to avoid certain poses that make you lie on your back for a long period of time or to stand in certain positions for a long period of time. There's tons of YouTube videos all about uh, pregnancy Pilates and pregnancy yoga that I think they're a lot of fun and they're safe. Check them out if that's something you want to do. Okay. So I want to jump into safety precautions when you're exercising during your pregnancy. So one thing that you always need to remember, keep yourself hydrated. Drink lots of water before and then during and then also after exercising. If you become dehydrated, it can make you feel dizzy. Your heart can race. And if you're in your second or your third trimester, you might feel Braxton Hicks. Where you exercise also matters. Make sure it's not too hot outside if you're gonna go outside to work out because you can get very dehydrated quickly if you're overheated. And if you are indoors, make sure the air conditioning is on or a window is open and avoid hot yoga. Also keep in mind that your outfit matters. And I'm not talking about like what your outfit looks like and if you're wearing Lululemon or whatever. I'm just talking about wearing something that's lightweight and comfortable with proper support. So the workout outfit you wore before your pregnancy, it probably is not gonna fit as well, especially if you're in your second or your third trimester. Make sure that you buy a sports bra that fits you well and offers you a lot of support for your very sensitive and enlarged breasts. If your doctor clears you for exercising in your third trimester, you can also wear like an abdominal belt like this. This is what I wore. This just wraps around your tummy down low and it offers some additional support and adds comfort when you're exercising. There are more supportive belts than this. This is very basic. I'll be sure to link to some in the video description so you can check them out. So as I mentioned earlier, I wanna talk about the exercises that you really need to avoid during your pregnancy. So in general, you wanna avoid contact sports. Workouts that involve a partner or a team like basketball, boxing, soccer, those are types of contact sports. And there's a risk that you might get hit in the abdomen or you could suffer other types of injuries because you were knocked over or bumped into by another player. Any activity that can result in falling, like skiing, surfing, gymnastics, or even horseback riding should be avoided. It's not necessarily a bad workout on its own, but again, there's a risk of serious injury if you fall. Even if you were a professional before you got pregnant, pregnancy might change your body in ways that you didn't expect. So if there is something that you love, love to do and you don't want to stop doing it, consult your OBGYN and talk to them about how you can minimize your risk and what to do in the case if you do happen to fall. Finally, you want to avoid any kind of diving. So I'm talking like cliff diving, um, really, really high cliff jumping, or if you're diving underneath the sea, it's really dangerous if you're pregnant. So reserve those things for after you deliver your baby. 
Another thing I want to point out that not every pregnancy is the same. All of the things that I just mentioned, all those recommendations apply only for a healthy single pregnancy. So if you're carrying twins or triplets or even more, you need to avoid many forms of exercise. You can still do light stretching and walking, but depending on your OBGYN, you might be advised to take it easy through your pregnancy or maybe even to have bed rest, especially in the last weeks before you are full term. These types of pregnancies are usually associated with a higher risk for preterm labor and delivery. Now, if you have an existing heart or lung problem, or if you have something called severe preeclampsia, you also might need to reconsider any workouts you're gonna do. And this is because your OBGYN is gonna have to address any existing medical problems first. They might feel like you need certain medications, or they might feel like that you need oxygen support. Also, if you have severe anemia, this means that your blood count is really low. You might be at risk for faint if you exert yourself too much. If you have placenta previa, which is a complication where the placenta plants itself on the opening of the cervix or near the cervix, you need to avoid exercise too much beyond 26 weeks of gestation. In fact, women with placenta previa who start having contractions and spotting before their due date are often put on bed rest. Pregnant women who have a history of preterm labor in previous pregnancies or in your current pregnancy may also be cautioned on exercise. And if you've had a surgery on your cervix, like something called a cerclage, where you have sutures that are placed around your cervix to prevent premature opening of your cervix, would also be a reason to avoid exercise. Exercise is beneficial for pregnancy, but when done in the wrong amount, the wrong intensity, or when you have reasons that you shouldn't be exercising, it can actually complicate your pregnancy. But if you are ever in doubt, always ask your provider about if it's okay to exercise, what type of exercising you're doing, and when it's time to stop. Finally, let me just say that everyone is different and every pregnancy is different. This video is general information about exercising and you and your OB need to determine what is right and safe for you. So be sure to talk to them, let them know your current fitness level, and then they're gonna determine based on that and your pregnancy situation, what is going to be safe for you. But hey, if you did love this video, it means the world to me if you give it a thumbs up. I love to read your comments. Comment down below. Let me know about you and your pregnancy. Earlier in the video, I mentioned my pregnancy week by week series. I'm gonna link to that series right here. Go check it out. Find what week you're at. Maybe check out a few weeks beforehand just to catch up. So click on that link right there and I will see you over there.